What's up and welcome to another Wizard Food live stream where you get to watch me make games and stuff live and ask me questions if you want. What's up? Welcome. What I'm working on today is the ghost roll for Load Ragger 5 vs 5 multiplayer game. Currently in its 2D mock-up phase. There's no three-dimensional pixel art going on yet, but that's the goal is 3D pixel art. So, let's take a look at where things already are. I got the AI system going, behavior trees, control the AI's behaviors. Um, and right now this is uh, a creep over here. When he attacks me, I'm the circle. Um, I turn red, I can attack him too, and the game crashes when, uh, when you die. Which is kind of appropriate, right? It should just crash when you die. Let's look at log.txt though, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, input buffer missing component for id1. So, basically what's happening is the, end, the health system is deleting the player whenever the player loses all its health. So the player just dies and it crashes. Well, there's no more player ID um, entity and no more of the components for the player either. They've been deleted. So that's what it's like, what's going on here? I'm trying to look for the input for the player. It's not there. So let's get that all fixed up. Where basically when you die, you should turn into the ghost and the ghost has to go back to your base to become human or yeah, human again. Okay, so what's first? We want the we want to be able to change into the ghost role when the player dies. So let's do that in a really, really simple hacky way at first. Here we are in health system. Health system tick. Let's create um First of all, I like to do this with my, my systems. I keep my systems as just simple namespaces so they can be extended at any point. Um, they don't need to have any variables. Actually, if they do have any variables, there's just static privates, which is a super cool way to hide your implementation from your header files, keeping header files minimal, absolute minimal. So basically, we're gonna put a new function into the uh, health system namespace. Um, let's call this tick entity and ref e double <laughs> double delta double delta we'll double down with the double delta so we got move system construct tick what's great about doing this like uh, this forward declaration of the namespace right here is that I can put this this tick right here at the end which is just a little more organized. We just go like this. Um, health system tick entity entity e delta, and this just turns into a new method. I'm doing this all on one vim command. Tick entity one vim. Uh, insert mode so that we can repeat it uh, okay uh, this needs to be ent e I mean ent id oh this needs to be a constant There we go. So what that does also is it simplifies. Look how much you, you can unindent some code. You automatically are making it a little bit more simple. This is nice right here. We've basically separated the loop of over, over all the entities in the health system into another method with the actual tick of the entities. Hold on, I haven't checked my stream health at all this whole time. All right, all right. We've got a few drop frames. Oh no, but it's still green. Um, it looks like I got a good internet connection here where I'm at, currently parked, you could say, <laughs> accurately. 
All right, so let's um, now that we've got that, basically let's put in a little hack right here, where um, if if when the player dies, just turn him into a ghost. I should probably do that with some kind of like health system flag or a health component flag actually, where the health component triggers that it's, or I mean, you know, saves the information that it when it dies, it needs to do a certain thing. But until I def define like what this all is, it's best to just like hack it first. So if this is the player, or this is a player, so um, if e uh, collision dot category dot has c category, ooh, what am I? Collision component. We have int. That's weird. We should have collision category. Hold on. Collision component. Dot h. Yeah, c category. Why isn't that being? Oh, maybe maybe because this is inside. Um, uh, inside vim vim's errors. Like maybe it's that's why it's like ah, I don't know what this is or I mean yeah there we go maybe I just had to open up see categories or um, collision component so if we have category player turn him into a ghost. Okay, and I've already done this once where I turn the player from rollless into the lumberjack or the builder. So we need to like use that same code. We're probably going to move it into int. So where did I put that again? Set roll somewhere. Oh, I think when you step on it. Yeah, here's all the code that happens when you switch to a different roll. Oh, it's only two things. But still. Now that it's two things, I really don't want to repeat this because what that does is it it creates uncohesive code, which is called what's the other word for it? I don't know, can't think of it right now. But what we're going to want to do is basically turn this into e dot set role for the entity. Now that we got two of these methods, we want to combine them into one. So let's go open up. Oops, let's close this little window down here. Let's open up int dot h. We're going to make a set role here. These are just, just make all these methods static. I was just trying to think of a way to do this better. Anyways, static void, set roll, roll type, roll, rolk, static set rolk, and dot cpp. Let's make a set set roll function. Let's go. Put this all the way at the end. Int. Set roll. And we're going to... Oh. oh, I lost it. Well, this should just be... Um, Render dot set roll, roll. Actually, we should probably do like if render. Why isn't that doing that? You don't like this? What is this? It all uses the render in the static method function. What? Of course, it's not a static method. So let's move that. Set roll. Thank you. 
Now, if input, input dot set role. Oh shoot, these should probably be, even these should probably be simplified into this end thing. Let's see, hold on, set role. We got input components version. Yep, that can ease, that should go all into this one method. Best to have one method rather than three methods to maintain one place for things rather than three places for things to remember where stuff is. Flood! What's up, brother? Howdy! Yeah, long time, man. How, how's business? Man, that was great when we got together last time. All right, set abilities, blah, 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 blah. Input dot ability. Flood, man, I missed you. I'm curious how you've been. How your business is going, how life is. Okay, so we can remove that method from input component. No more set role there, only the set role and int. Um, and we want the render component as well. It's a roller coaster. Oh, going back up though. Future's looking well, good man. Yeah, I know what you mean. About a startup being a roller coaster. I've been, I've watched Silicon Valley, the show. I know all about I know all about startups from watching that show. Wait, was it called Silicon Valley? What's that? That's that comedy show. It's really great. Hey, Alessandro Buegas. What's up, everybody? How's it going? Yeah, it's called Silicon Valley. That's right. Yes, <laughs> that's it's accurate. Is it accurate for you? That's great. Yeah, long time no see, all you guys. What's up, Boygus? So how, how have you guys been? It's late over there or early. Shoot, it's super early for you guys, huh? Man, I'm curious how you guys have been. What's what's been going on? Yeah, 1 a.m. Yeah, all, all is great here. All is really great. Things are awesome. I'm down in Arizona visiting my dad um, for Christmas. It's a good time. Hope you guys are good too. Oh, you got exams tomorrow. Ah, I know that have to entertain yourself thing. Yes. I've had some sleepless nights as well the last year or two gosh many of them actually where am I based I'm based all over the place because I'm in well I'm guess like you could say I'm based in this van I live in a van and travel around and make my game I have my I wish I could show you a here this is my van you kind of see like I don't know what your camera is really seeing right now but like, I've been so over the last six months, I've been converting this van into an RV and, um, and yeah. And I got this, so basically my computer is on this arm. Like I got this little like laptop arm for like monitors. And so my computer actually mounts to the wall of the van. Not as cool as the closet. <laughs> Yeah, um, if anybody's curious what the heck we're talking about, I use my my last coding uh, battle station setup was inside of a closet. <laughs> yeah, it's a coding machine. Yeah, it totally is. 
I'm rolling around in a coding machine. I just got like, whoop, open my, my laptop, pull it off the wall. And just, I'm coding in seconds. That's great. I love it. And it's really been fun to like uh, be all custom with it. Like I've been like, how do I want to do my bed? How do I want to have refrigerator? And where do I want to put my sink? How high do I want to put my sink? And dude, that was such a cool thing to finally have something that's like fits my height. Like, whoa, this sink top is perfect. I love it. And like having life be a little bit smoother like that is just... It kind of makes all of my coding better, you know? I'm like, I can easily switch into code mode so fast. I love it. Space is limited. Space is cool. You could say it's limited. <laughs> yeah. This is a, it's a tall van, but it's, it's a short van. So I can stand up in it, which is great. Like, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to, I've lived in a boat before for an entire year that was too short for me to stand up in. And um, so you're, it's basically a sit down type boat. You know, you're sitting down all the time when you're in the boat. Um, but this van, I can stand all the way up in it. And it's so cool. I love that. And, but yeah, it's real limited this way. So I spend a lot of time outdoors. <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy too. I'm a happy man. Life's great. I can't complain about anything. And it wouldn't do any good if I did. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Might be mistaken for a spy. Totally. You should see the outside too, because I have this like uh I I'll have to post some pictures at some point, but like I have this like uh cell phone booster which sits on the outside and it kind of like sits at a little bit of an angle because of just how I had to physically mount it and stuff with the wire going in the van and all that. But it boosts my cell phone signal so I can like live stream from, from remote places sometimes. Um, and it's at this weird angle that it's looks like a horn almost or some kind of NASA like s s secret, yeah, like secret agents type stuff. It's, it's funny looking. Yeah. I like it. And there's, oh, there's a really cool thing. There's the, these, um, double O whiz. <laughs> um, there's these skylights in the ceiling, which are pretty cool too. So I, um, that was a fun part of the project was drilling the holes for this, for these, like, there's like many of these circular skylights in the ceiling. Oh, whoops. I deleted the code I just needed. Man, it's great to be great to be chatting with you guys again. Um, it's also really great to be making this new game. I'm super stoked about Load Dragger. It's been it's been a while since I made a multiplayer game. Well, I guess it was only two two games ago, but um, it's so good to be making a new one. Even though I really do want to get back to making uh, the Songbringer stream at some point, or the Songbringer series, the next game in the Songbringer series. Yeah, living the dream. Thanks, man. Oh, so we want to go set roll, and then e dot uh, roll dot roll equals roll. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, Songbringer 2 at some point. But so for now, this game I'm writing, writing which hopefully will get done faster than um, than Song Songbringer took about three and a half years. And I think I can get this multiplayer game done in about a year and a half to two years. And I think it could be beta like about eight or nine months from now. So, yeah. So, but then after that, I'm thinking Song Ringer 2 would be really fun to do. And maybe even incorporating some multiplayer elements into Song Ringer 2. That might be fun. Like if you could play Song Ringer 2 with a friend. I don't know. Might be fun. Oh, I'm online. Ah, so this game is called Load Ragger. Um, L O D 
R A G G R E R. Um, but anyways, it's a five on five creative multiplayer game where um, you're it's it's competitive. So your goal is to basically steal the other team's lodestone and bring it back to your base. Um, in your team of five players, you can you start off without any role, and then during the match you can change your role. So you can change from being nothing to um, a lumberjack or a builder or um, a knight with a sword and um, an archer and a mage and a healer and a pyro and an assassin and a spy and a bomber and um, basically all these different roles you can you all you do is you purchase a different weapon and you instantly become that role so you can change your role during the match and you and you start off with all these trees around you and you can carve your way towards the enemy team's base so basically you get to carve your own lanes each match um, I'm imagining each one of the multiplayer matches is about 15 minutes to 20 minutes something like that it is that sort of that sort of range is a target amount of time you play each match and it'll have a um, a hub world as well so you basically will um, you'll you'll actually start aboard songbringer this is the, this game is in the songbringer universe so it'll have like the same kind of swords and sci-fi stuff um, and it'll be a pixel art per, pixel art but 3d so 3d basically 3d pixel art so I'm working on a voxel engine which is has really tiny voxels um, and of course renders to a back buffer so get so hopefully I can get that same look as Songbringer except be fully 3d where you can rotate the camera and do some fun 3d stuff like that so that's load ragger in a nutshell um, yeah right so it's 3d yeah 3d voxel yeah I'm pretty excited to be making it Yeah, yeah, I'm excited, and um, I'm back by Double Eleven again. So Double Eleven, my publisher from Songbringer, um, we have a great relationship. I love those guys so much, and they're gonna support this game too. Um, uh, but it's also contingent on some things. Like we need to basically get, you know, I need to hit a certain goal by a certain point of time. To you know, is this game gonna be something that we continue with, right? So. Um, but they're, gosh, it's been so great to have, have found them. They're awesome. Um, so, but anyways, I still need your guys' help along the way. It's been great, like, making Songbringer and, like, being able to, like, get you guys' feedback on, on things live, on all these live streams. And, gosh, I got programming advice from you guys, art advice, all that kind of stuff. I want to make Lodragger the same kind of thing where I take your guys' advice and implement it. So... If you're watching this on YouTube, feel free to share, you know, share with me. You can find my email on songbringer.com or wizardfoo.com or follow the links through my Twitch or my YouTube info. Yeah, the, th the 3D model. So let me show you some of that so far. Um, I, I'm using uh, Magic of Voxel to create 3D models. Um, one thing about Magic of Voxel, so like here is basically rock in 3D. Um, and basically to the one part about, uh, Magic of Voxel is there's no animation. There is animation in the old version of it. And I guess it's not part of the new version yet, but one big drawback of that is that you can't press the play button to play your animations in Magic of Voxel. So I've had to code a lot of special stuff to like get, to get animations going and all those kinds of things. I mean, the Voxel engine, it has a lot of work left to do. I'm currently at a point where I'm just like putting the voxel engine on pause and focusing entirely on gameplay. But you can see what some of these models look like. Like here's what, if I just click through these frames, you can see what it's kind of like, what, what rock would look like running. Yeah, exactly. 3D but pixely is, is going to be the look. But it'll be a bit more zoomed out. So how do I zoom out on this version of Magica? thought it was oh I think it's these oh so maybe about there like the pixels will be a the voxels I'm sorry will be about the same size as the pixels were in Songbringer so uh, what I'm trying to do is basically create 3d pixel art 
Um, and it is kind of a challenge because you, it's never going to be quite perfect. No matter what, what camera angle you choose to use, even 45, you're, you're going to obscure some pixels and not have some pixels. So gosh, it's like, but it still kind of looks good. The voxel engine that I've already written is, it kind of looks good, but it performs so horribly, like at one frame a second right now that I can't, I can't live stream it. And basically I've had some, some troubling issues where I'm just like, okay, let's pause this and focus entirely on 2D gameplay with 2D sprites for now. Um, which has kind of really been quite uh, liberating. Thanks, man. Yeah, so Magicka, that's really all I have to show so far. Just started modeling some characters so far in 3D. But yeah, that's been fun. It's been, so I kind of wanted to make a 2D pixel art game again, but I just knew in my heart that I had to like elevate things a little bit. Like I, I was like, I can't just do 2D pixel art because there were certain things about Songbringer doing the 2D pixel art that I couldn't do with two dimensions, especially when you get like a wall that's like at a certain Z depth and then you got the player at a certain Z depth and the player is 2D. So like, even though the sword for the player might be in front of that wall, the whole bit of the player, that whole sprite has to be behind the wall or in front of the wall. So like that kind of thing, like I really want to do perfect 3D pixel art with projected shadows, like really awesome looking shadows and lights and glowing effects and combining everything I've learned about making shaders and, um, and, and, and like 2D pixel art and combining that into like a 3D look would be super cool. And I can see once I've once I get this engine where I have a cool voxel 3D pixel art engine, I can use that for pretty much every other game I make, um, I would think. Because I love the pixel art style, but I really feel limited by the two dimensions. I would, I would love to have that third dimension, um, but still look like pixel art. Yeah. 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 Oh, right. Yeah, you can do it with Z-buffering. Yeah. Layer your sprite with fake Z. Yeah. Or slice your sprite into several different um, strips. Yeah, Z-map. That's interesting. Huh. Yeah. But still, there's certain things. There's Even, even if you do a Z-map... Yeah, pixel art is a little a bit overused these days. Yeah, but even if you do do a Z map, you're not gonna have um, uh, you still don't have the the dynamic shadows. You know what I mean? Or the, I mean the three dimensional shadows. I want to have perfect three dimensional shadows that cast themselves onto walls and use the actual three dimensional geometry of the character, and that that you can't do with pixel art or two D at all. HG Sarah, what's up, bro? Happy holidays to you as well. Yeah, yeah, you definitely would run into silly issues with the Z mapping. But it is it is one way it is you can't overcome some of the limitations of a 2D engine that way. You're totally right. Um yeah, so it's kind of a stretch. It's a stretch for me to create this game in 3D. It's I'm I'm having to grow as a programmer, which is uh, which is great. And another challenge is going to be about this making making this game is going to be the multiplayer engine. I've already made a multiplayer engine for uh, for Hero Bash, my my game before Songbringer. So I know how to do this. And now I'm like, how do I approach like creating this multiplayer engine and server um, with um, Without as many problems as I had before, the main problem with that I had with my last multi real time multiplayer game was um, that they're desyncs because I I wrote a, it wrote it as peer to peer, so you know every single peer sent packets to every single other peer of what of what their input was for that tick, and they just sent all their input 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 sending it sending it sending it. So what would happen sometimes is yeah I try and get this client 
and this client and this client and this client, all the clients running exactly the same stuff. But what you inherently run into is input issues where you just like, they, you know, a packet gets lost or a packet arrives before another packet or other kinds of little issues happen where clients get out of sync. And that was hard. So I think I want to do this game as a uh, client server. And besides that, that eliminates the cheating. And it also eliminates another huge issue about peer-to-peer -peer multiplayer real-time games where you have, um, you have which, which one of your clients is actually the... Wh where is the authority, right? If, if like six out of eight of the clients think that a certain player has this set of input, but two out of the eight think that the this other player has like this set of input, right? Which input do you trust? The, right? I was like, how do you how do you overcome that with a peer-to-peer -peer game? Do you rotate the host? Do you rotate the one the person that's the authority? I don't know. That's a challenge. It's because uh, that's why I think client server is probably the way to go at this this game. Um, you finally hundred percent in Song Ringer. Yeah, you found the Raptor. <laughs> Yeah, that was that Raptor is from Brad. Brad um, used to watch the stream all the time, and he uh, supported on the Kickstarter for Songbringer. And his so his there was there was a couple different levels on this Songbringer Kickstarter. Like one was um, design your own NPC, and he he backed the project at that level where he could design his own NPC. So that Raptor, or or it's actually a is it a it's basically a dinosaur, a bored songbringer. It's always a bored songbringer somewhere, in whatever different world seed you're in on songbringer. Um, the ra the the raptor dinosaur is always on the ship, um, but that's Brad's NPC. So, yeah, and Brutus is um, Steve's NPC. So, also another person that um, used to watch the stream all the time and communicates all the time too. We always, we're always like chatting about stuff. He's a cool programmer. Um, he uses Cocos 2DX as well. Steve does. Uh, but, uh, yeah, my days of Cocos 2DX are numbered. I'm soon going to be using Double Eleven's engine exclusively just to make it easier to port the game to consoles super faster. Okay, so... How much time do I have left? I only have a moment left to stream. Oh, oh, 17 minutes. I got 17 minutes left. Here we go. So, whoa. <laughs> yeah. Let's close this. We got int set roll. So here. And when the player dies, reset his hit points. E.health.hp equals E.health.maxhp. And turn him into a ghost. E dot set roll. See roll ghost. We're gonna have to do something about the health or the invisibility or oop. What's wrong with that? Oh, it's HP max. Right. Oh, set roll. Dang. Oh yeah, this is kind of janky. There's probably a better way to do this, but basically I've made it so like ends contain a bunch of different references to components. So I've made some of these methods const, even though they are they're not modifying the entity or the end itself. They're modifying the ends components, which really shouldn't make these methods const. It's just like kind of misleading, but still. Make some of these th other things work. You know what? Let's actually let's not do that. I think that is a bit too janky. I'm gonna go ahead and go to int.h and undo that. And I'm just gonna fix up the health system so it doesn't need to pass a const int. We'll just do an int int. Not a constant, but an end to end. There. Okay. So now when the player dies, we got this set roll. 
and restore hit points. So let's see if this works. We'll set a breakpoint here. See what happens when this actually occurs. Whoa, what's that? Let's get rid of yesterday's breakpoints. We don't need yesterday's breakpoints. Okay, this is going to run super slow because the game ain't optimized yet at all. And it's a two-dimensional mock-up. But let's see what happens. See if we can change from the roll list or whatever to ghost or for the lumberjack. Change from the lumberjack to the ghost. Yeah, we're in like three frames a second. Got it. Okay, so I got to get this creep to come over and kill me. Come on, kill me, man. No, I'm right here. Yeah. All right, cool. I'm dead. Let's make this code. See if it works. All right, so we've restored the player's hit points. We're not going to destroy the player. Check the health component. Nice. <laughs> All right, player's health is restored. Well, let's make sure the set roll function works. Roll dot roll. Cool. If render. Oh, we didn't define that. Yes. Good thing I just. Good thing I debugged that. That wasn't doing anything. Because we need inside int, we need kit definitions or defines. What's going on here? Defines. There we go. So that'll define all the defining things. All the defining things that we need to define. Hmm. Really? A warning? We can't have warnings in our code. No way. I don't like warnings at all. We need to handle all cases here. Default break. What's up? What are these other roles? Warnings. Overflow converting case value to switch condition. What the heck does that even mean? Oh, 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 oh. This is render.sprite. What's wrong? What's, that's what's wrong with that. Oh, and this is roll.roll. There. Okay, duh. Because I lifted all this from um, render component, I had to make it applicable to its parent entity type of thing. Okay, so I don't know what's happened here, but. Sometimes when I build from the command line, Xcode doesn't display the error, or it's possibly that I'm using Xcode pretty, XC pretty, and X, that's not. <laughs> nice, you like that? Roll that roll. <laughs> Look at this right here. Roll dot roll equals roll underscore. What the hell is that supposed to mean? Did the programmer make a joke? Is this, it's gotta be a joke, right? Nobody does that. All right, build. Oh, Sprite. I just need Sprite. I wish you could have told me that from the command line. But something's wrong with my... Something's wrong with my build. Either, you know, it happened when Xcode switched to version 10. Something happened. I think XC Pretty doesn't understand something that Xcode 10 did. But I love XC Pretty. Because without it, all that input, all this stuff over here would just look really weird. All this, like, just tons of... It'd be all this uh, right here, which it'd be like, all that would be outputted to <laughs> just for one CPP file. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 
And I, and likewise, I can't help you with the Windows nonsense either. <laughs> Wow, we're already up to build 6,261 in this game. And I've only been making it for like four months. Alright, kill me. Kill me. Right there, I'm a ghost. Sweet. I'm a ghost. Yay. So ghosts can move through trees. Ghosts can not be killed. Uh, except by other ghosts. Other ghosts can, like, basically, yeah, kill a ghost. So, I think, is he even looking for me? Why isn't he? Oh, there he goes. Oh, I would just become a ghost again. Okay. But creeps should not be able to target ghosts. So, there's some stuff left to do here. <laughs> you need help, though. <laughs> I do need help. That's very, very much a good, a, a truth. So when a ghost dies, it just takes a amount, amount of time before it becomes a ghost again. You're just like out a few seconds of gameplay. You're like, shoot, I can't do anything. You know like how when you uh, when you die in a MOBA, you're just unspawned at that point and you're waiting to spawn. The ghost, if you die as a ghost, you have to wait for a little while until you turn back into a ghost. That's all. And then when you're a ghost, you have to you have to walk back to the base, float back to the base, I guess. And then once you're back to the base, you turn back into a human. All right, man. I probably will be because uh, I got to stop streaming in seven minutes. But yeah. Hey, dude. It's good seeing you. H.G. Saro, I've been loving your, your gifts, man. Thanks for posting. Thanks for making your game. Thanks for posting your gifts. If a ghost can move through the trees, it can go to the enemy base and report stuff to the team. Right. Yes, it can. When you're a ghost... You're like a, you're like a, you, it ca you can use the vision, uh, so the vision from when you're a ghost counts for your team. It's kind of a thing. You can become a spy, basically, when you're a ghost. But the downside is, as a ghost, you're not doing anything at all, except for just sitting there being invisible at the other team's base and, and giving visibility to your team. So, and, if you're all the way at the enemy team's base, and you're a ghost, you to become human again, you'd have to go all the way back to your base and become human. So, there's pluses and minuses. Ghost traps? Oh, that's a cool idea. Oh, that's a cool idea. Oh, I love it, blood. Yeah, you know what? That could be... So, you can build buildings... One of the roles is a builder role, and your weapon is a hammer, and you can build buildings, and it costs wood and it costs gold to build buildings, but uh, that would be a cool building, right? A ghost trap? So, like, it's just like a thing that you would build somewhere, and if you're a ghost and you're near it, it, like, sucks you in and you're stuck there for a little while. I like that. You'd be the, you'd be the, you'd be the Ghostbusters at that point. I wish they knew their names. What are the Ghostbusters names again? Shoot. Cool idea, dude. That's a really sweet idea. I love it. The ghost trap. <laughs> trap the ghosts. Okay, so this bit of code I'm gonna check in already. We've got a we've organized set role into a a better place inside Ent. We've turned the player into a ghost when you die. We've done it in a janky way in the health system. There probably should be a flag to do this. But for now, it's only like a few lines of code. So I'm not going to worry too much about that. So we've taken away set role from uh, render component and input component, merged it into int. Move system now uses that e.set role. And the health system uses e.set role when you die. So that's some cohesive code right there. Putting things in one place instead of two. Yes. Easier maintenance, better cohesion, better code. All right. Saul is good. Checking us in. Checking us in before anyone can stop me. Um, this is a uh, make player turn into. I was just like, let's just call it turn player into ghost. Upon 
death. Sweet. Oh, this is from. Oh, this is this is Songbird Code right here. All right. Well, I. What time is it? I gotta get going, anyways. It's four fifty-six. Gotta meet up with my dad tonight. Stoked to see my dad for a little while. This is the holiday season, and I hope y'all are having a good holidays too. I wish you happy holidays. Happy if you're even having holidays right now. Some people don't have holidays right now. Some people do. Some people have holidays later, like in February. So, anyways, it was good chatting with you guys. Um, and cool idea of Lud. And, um, yeah. Um, hopefully during the next, as this game gets to be more in, more in its, like, uh, intense phases, uh, I'll be, probably be streaming more. But for now, I've been streaming, like, once a week, and then doing these videos and stuff on the meantime. So, but when things start heating up, I'll probably be doing more streams. So, it was good catching up. Yes, it was. Alright, so I'll catch you all next time. Thanks for watching.